as a template for courts such as this honorable court to follow. Article 114, I mean paragraph 114. To the question whether due process was followed in the removal of the appellant, the Audi alteram patem rule requires that those who are likely to be directly affected by the outcome of a decision should be given prior notification of the action. So they, they give a whole list of what must be done. Prior notification of the action proposed to be taken of, of the time and place of any hearing that is to be conducted and of the charge or case they will be called upon to meet. They must be given an opportunity to be heard. Now, it is not a matter in dispute that on the night the Senate, I and my colleagues on both sides were present in the Senate, our client was taken ill. I have subsequently read in the newspapers he had a broken heart for good reason. So he is taken ill and the Senate then takes a vote. And this was important because the Senate had two days left even in their own self-prescribed time limits. They voted, and this was not an electronic vote. They voted on acclamation to reject a motion to extend time for the deputy president to appear uh, uh, my in Lord, court. If I, if I may, I, I am compelled to interrupt. My Lord, learned counsel is misleading the court. When on a feed of it, it is clear that the Senate votes electronically. Senate does not vote by acclamation. I do not know what paragraph is addressing himself. Perhaps he can point to the court to the paragraph he's addressing himself to on the question of acclamation. We can't just sit back and watch Mr. Masharia mislead the court. I was personally there. Senior Council Muita was there. The entire team, most of them were there. On the question of extension of time, it was by acclamation. All the eyes and all the nose, that's what it was. And the senator was now. <laughs> yes, and and uh, and uh, I would ask him to please uh, wait. He'll be a bit more bothered when I finish with my submission, so he can be bothered fully when I finish. <laughs> so this is what the court says: they must be given an opportunity to be heard, to call witnesses, to be represented by counsel, to be availed adequate time and facilities to prepare, and if the accusations are proved, to be given the reasons. This is important. The Supreme Court says. You must be given reasons for your decision. There are no reasons. They voted on grounds submitted to them by the National Assembly. They did not give reasons for that decision. Of course, beyond there, they are also entitled to challenge the decision again. You've been told these decisions are not challengeable. The Supreme Court says the accused must have a right to challenge the decision if against them before a higher court or tribunal. At paragraph 115, article 47 of the Constitution enshrines the right of every person to fair administrative action. The manner of actualization of those rights have been enacted in the Fair Administrative Actions Act. Now, when this honorable court retires to do its ruling, I would invite you with tremendous respect to pay attention so, to sections four and five of the Fair Administrative Action Act. They're important in more regards than one. Senior Counsel uh, Paul Muite has uh, alluded to the question of public participation, and so will some of my colleagues who will come after me. When the National Assembly conducted what it called public participation, it did not avail to the public, the response by the deputy president. What they did is prepare a charge sheet, a copy of which you will find as an extra eight of our affidavit in support of the petition, which for ease of reference is at page 498. That charge sheet asks three questions. It first sets out the 10 grounds that the motion uh, promoter had set out and then asks people do you agree that uh, the deputy president should be impeached on these grounds do you not agree and then there was a third one other that was it they were not told what his response was nor was he given an opportunity prior 
to this process. Because the only way, and you'll find that this is one of the things uh, the, the Supreme Court says under the Article 47 and Fair Administrative Action Act. The participants in this public participation must know both sides of the story to make an informed decision as the people who voted in this man. The court then goes on at paragraph 116. In the process of removal of a county governor, and for this case the deputy president, the right to fair administrative action under Article 47 and the right to fair hearing under Article 50 of the Constitution all accrue, and I'm paraphrasing here, to the deputy president before a decision to remove him or her from office is reached. An unfair removal is one which goes against the principles of natural justice, just like I've demonstrated which implies that no adequate notice was given, that there was bias, and where the hearing was not fair. In our amended petition, which you will see in the fullness of time, we have given particulars of how each and every of these issues was violated. The Senate and the National Assembly, first and foremost, constricted the time allowed by the Constitution for themselves. They cut their own time short. And so no one had sufficient time to do anything. We have said, they introduced new evidence as the trial was going. There was panel beating as, as, as the matter was going on. And as I've said, there was a lack of fair hearing. Though, this is Supreme Court, though a political process, impeachment is sanctioned by the Constitution and the law and is not a platform to settle political scores. This speaks to what Senior Counsel Paul Moita said a few minutes ago. It's not an issue of ticking boxes, going into a room, and saying, 300 of us have said, you're a bad man, you must go. You're a bad woman, you must go. You must comply with each and every of the provisions of the Constitution. Bearing in mind that the removal architecture in the Constitution, the law, and the standing orders are designed to achieve accountability, political governance, and personal responsibility, and are not aimed necessarily to find criminal responsibility. On the question of natural justice, this is what, um, this was a decision by, I believe, your brother, Justice Odunga. It's uh, in, in our list. This is miscellaneous civil application number 266 of 2017. He cites at paragraph 69 a case, um, I believe, um, um, from Uganda. It is a cardinal rule of natural justice that no one should be condemned and had. Natural justice is, a, is not a creature of humankind. They're asking you, to take away a creature and let me read to you what it says it was ordained by the divine hand of the lord god what god has given us do not allow these respondents to take away from the deputy president and that any law that contravenes or offends against any of the rules of natural justice is null and void of no and of no effect the rule as captured in the latin phrase audi alteram patem literally translates into hear the parties in turn and has been appropriately paraphrased as do not condemn anyone unheard. That is what the Senate did to the Deputy President. You cannot allow their resolution to stand. Um, there is a, a decision, I will not read this for you, but this is a decision of the High Court, a three-judge bench, Republic versus National Land Commission. Um, I believe this is miscellaneous uh, application number 266 of 2017 at paragraph 109. Uh, the decision of the Supreme Court of Kenya in Speaker of the National Assembly versus Attorney General and three others, where the court again restated, the Supreme Court, your jurisdiction in these circumstances. And then to the Senate uh, proceedings I've just uh, read out for you. In the Wambora, in the Martin Wambora case, um, this is what, um, this, is, this is the case, this is, um, um, it's cited in the Mike uh, Sonkombovi case uh, versus uh, clerk of the Nairobi County Assembly, at paragraph 226. I believe this is the High Court decision. This is what the court said about what my good friend, uh, Professor Ogenda, uh, was um, getting a bit hot under the collar over. Although it does not fall within our remit to direct the legislature on how to perform its functions, we are of the considered view that impeachment of a governor is a serious undertaking, just like a deputy president as the end result can lead to the removal of a popularly, popularly elected governor. The deputy president before you and the president who ran for election in 2022.